Roxo Media House. You know, situational football and turnovers are the two things for us that, you know, we're going to have to be good at if we're going to have a good football team. And so those are things that we're certainly emphasizing all the time with our players and lots of teaching moments uh, when you do that stuff. This is Frogs Today Daily. And here's your host, the voice of the frogs, Brian Estridge. Welcome to Frogs Today Daily. Here we are after practice number 10 in the TCU football offices. Big day today for both sides. As a matter of fact, Sonny Dykes, who we're going to hear from a little bit later on, said this, folks, was a competitive practice. He, he asked them to strain a little bit, if you will, put them in tough situations. A lot of situational work here today for the team, you know, just to see how they react uh, deep in their own territory, defense backed up, third down and long, things of that nature. He wanted to see how players would react, liked what he saw out of, bound, out of both the offense and the defense. It's interesting here, a couple of days ago, the defense had had a really, well, really solid couple of days. They'd gotten the best of the offense, but here of late, the offense has come back around. So that's kind of what you want to see uh, in the spring. We'll hear from Sonny Dykes a little bit later on. But uh, first off, we had a couple of players who made their way into the interview room. And let's start with J.P. Richardson, the wide receiver, the transfer from Oklahoma State. Of course, his dad, Bucky, was a great quarterback down at Texas A&M. And we asked J.P., among other questions, we started out with this one, how's he like this Kendall Bryles offense? Uh, you know, just taking it day by day. And I think we have the potential to be something really special. So. Yeah, I think they're doing a great job. Uh, I live with Chandler, so I get to talk to him a lot about you know how uh, how he's feeling and what he's looking at, and just kind of get on the same page as him. So when we're out there, we know you know what he's looking at. We can just be on the same page 24/7. Um, they've just both came out and done a really good job. I know it's been a lot on them uh, with the whole install. I mean, you know, we had pretty much an install every single day, so. It's, it's a lot of information to grasp really quickly and you know, go out there and do it full speed. So um, really just want to say props to those, th- those guys in the quarterback room. I know they got a, a lot on their plate, and I think they've done a great job so far. It's been great, uh, you know, getting started with Coach Cause as soon as we got here. Uh, you know, I've quickly learned that uh, he doesn't play around, and he's truly one of the best in the business. And, you know, I think you hear it a lot. He's like the secret sauce behind the team. And, I really got to, I think, see that and understand that when I first got here, um, just the way it goes about everything as far as strength and conditioning and I think more importantly just transforming us to be better human beings and better men. So it's been great, man. I think we're extremely talented. Um, you know, obviously I feel like I bring a lot of experience uh, to this team, especially for the young guys. Um, JoJo, he's one heck of a player, obviously great athlete, major, he can – you know, run out the whole track meet. I mean, he's a 10-2 guy, 10-3 guy, um, smart kid. Jordan Bailey, he's done nothing but good things. Um, you know, he's an early enrollee. You know, a kid's supposed to still be in high school right now, getting ready for prom or whatever, and he's out here making plays. So um, I feel like we're really explosive as a receiver room, as an inside receiver room and outside receiver room, but I feel like our uh, inside receiver room will be really special this year. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm a route runner. I know how to create space, and I can also run by you. Um, I just feel like what separates me from a lot of people is also my hands. Um, you know, I don't drop the ball very often. That's something I pride myself on. It's a big deal to me. You know, just getting open, creating space, and catching the ball when it's thrown to me. Um, I think it's the mentality. You know, uh, I think a lot of the uh, what Kaz says a lot is you know we're kind of or I say we like I was here last year. The guys were um, kind of happy to be there is what the vibe was. And I just feel like going into this year, like we should expect to be in the game. So I just feel like what I've learned is just to have that killer mentality all, at all times, never take a day off, never take a day for granted. And I feel like I've uh, really just learned what real grind looks like. Man, he's been nothing but supportive about everything through you know the entire process, dating all the way back to high school. Um, I feel like a lot of people, I mean, obviously went to Texas A&M out of high school. It's like, oh, he's going to go to A&M, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, he has had absolutely no bias, no anything like that. He's just been fully supportive of whatever I want to do. And, of course, he's been the person there to guide me in the right direction, help me with whatever questions I have and all that. But he's, you know, my parents have been nothing but extremely supportive in whatever I want to do. And they definitely got my back, and he was, you know, ecstatic. I mean, he knows Sonny, 
Uh, he knows me real well. So, I mean, he was, you know, pumped up that I was coming to Fort Worth and uh, definitely makes it a little bit easier on him to get to games and stuff. So I know they're happy about that. That's wide receiver J.P. Richardson joining us in that interview room. Let's go to the defensive side of the ball now where Avery Helm. Now, this is a Texan who went to Florida, if you remember, now has come back here to the Lone Star State. He's a terrific corner, very talented. Uh, we talked to him about this defense under Joe Gillespie and how he's responding to it. Yeah, I'm enjoying the defense. It's mostly, you know, man match coverage. So, you know, that's, that's what I thrive in. So I'm excited to get, you know, get to it. I mean, the group is very athletic. I think you could tell from, you know, the past season, you know, their accomplishments. And then this season, you know, we're just hoping to build on it. But I'm very pleased with the team as a whole. I came in, I seen the scheme, I seen how many DBs, you know, Coach G plays on the field. So I feel like that was like a big thing to me that he actually cares about the de defensive backs and then, you know, getting the scheme. And it just was the perfect fit, being close to the home. It's a number of reasons why. Uh, well, it's been my third defense, so, you know, it's very simple. It's the simplest defense I've been a part of, so I'm picking it up very easily. Is that allowing you to play faster? A lot faster, a lot less thinking, more doing. The defense line is great. This is just – from watching the scrimmage, I watched the scrimmage, and I was very excited to see, like, what I have up front, you know, because if they make plays, they help me make plays. So, you know, we make money together. It's like we in a marriage together. Um, the, mentality, the mentality is totally different here. You know, I've just seen the – well, it starts with Coach Kaz, honestly. You know, he, he enforces a great baseline attitude, like, that everybody should be, you know, a part of. So I feel like once the head, it just triggers down. So I feel like as long as everybody's on the same mission, you can't lose. That's Avery Helm on football, the frog corner. But there's another side of Avery that we learned about, his why, if you will. Why does Avery do what he does? Well, he's got a younger brother with autism. It means a lot to him. He referenced that today in the interview room. Honestly, my why is my little brother, you know. That's just, he the reason I put the pads on every day, you know. I got to make sure he don't never work a job. Um, so I got a puzzle piece tattoo on my arm with my little brother name in it. You know, I put it in a very specific location so I can always look down and, you know, remind myself that, you know, that's my reason why I need to wake up and do what I do every day. So my little brother, he just turned 10 years old. You know, he just started talking not too long ago. You know, he putting sentences together now, so it's still... Interesting, you know, hearing him talk to us, and it's just a great experience with him in my life. You know, he opened my mind up to a lot of different things, you know, to see somebody just be happy every day and not really care about too much, so that's a good thing. That's Frog defensive back Avery Helm joining us in the interview room. All right, coming up next, we'll hear from the head coach of the Horn Frogs, Sonny Dykes, plus two Horn Frog legends who were at practice today. We got to talk to both of them. We do that when Frogs Today Daily continues after this timeout. At Higginbotham, we put people first. So, we simply start by listening to you. Whether you're searching for customized insurance, HR, or financial solutions to protect your home, car, health, business, or employees, our specialists are here to serve you, the people you care about, and your success. Higginbotham, insurance, HR, and financial services. Inspired by you. Texas-based Happy Water offers the best-tasting, sugar-free kids' drink ever made. Happy Water comes in four delicious flavors that you can find at local retailers and on Amazon. Each pouch contains zero grams of sugar, zero calories, and zero percent juice. Head to happydrinks.com for more information and to purchase Happy Water. That's H-A-P-I drinks.com. Live happy. Be happy. Drink happy. The Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student-athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student-athletes through a series of unique event-based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student-athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. Welcome back into Frogs Today Daily. Here we are in the football offices at TCU after practice number 10, as we mentioned. All right, Sonny Dykes was in the interview room today, our opportunity to talk with the head coach. And we started with this uh, question. First off, he gives us a synopsis of the day. Let's hear that first. Here he is on this practice that he just went through, practice number 10 with his Horn Frogs. Yeah, good practice today. Um, really competitive. Thought it was good. You know, I think that the last uh, two in particular have been, you know, 
the offense and defense have kind of traded uh, parts of practice where you know one one group had the upper hand and the other took it, and so that's that's what you want to see. You want to see it be competitive, and so that's been good. Um, we're getting lots of situational work, which for us is important. That gives us great, you know, teaching opportunities to learn from, you know, third down and how to play certain things in third down, or how to play things on the red red zone or goal line or coming off all that stuff. So we're getting a lot of work that way, and and again, that allows us to teach our players, you know, how to think uh, and how to react and how to play, you know, certain down and distances and certain situations, which again I think is a big. A big part of football. I mean, you just look at the game. You know, the the teams that do well in those situations are the teams that are successful. And and so, you know, situational football and turnovers are the two things for us that you know we're going to have to be good at if we're going to have a good football team. And so, those are things that we're certainly emphasizing all the time with our players and lots of teaching moments uh, when you do that stuff. Coach Sonny Dykes also talked about the running back room here for the Horn Frogs. I mean, you, you've got some really talented players, including the Alabama transfer, Trey Sanders, in that room. But yet, how do you know? These guys have not been starters. They haven't had to carry the load. So how do you judge their talent level? Here's what he had to say. Well, you know, we, we tackled guys uh, Saturday. Um, and so that was good. You know, I was encouraged. You know, there were some guys – I hadn't really seen Corey Wren get tackled, and I hadn't, um, you know, he just hadn't had a chance to play that in let me live situations. Trey Sanders, kind of the same boat. So it's just good to see those guys, you know, do that when you play live. That's a great chance to evaluate those running backs because they're hard to evaluate in practice. I mean, it's, you know, some guys look really good, and, and when they're catching the ball coming out of the backfield, and, they know what to do, and they look good in the, running in the open field. But the great backs are the ones that, you know, can figure out how to consistently make three yards. And that's hard to measure when you're not tackling guys. And so, you know, I, you get they need to play in those situations and do well. And um, so that's – I'm encouraged by that group, though, because there's – I like having different styles of backs, and there's lots of different guys, you know, uh, running styles and receiving styles and – you know, kind of strengths and weaknesses in that group, and um, I think they complement each other well. The offensive installation continues for the Horn Frogs, but one thing has happened now over the last couple of days, and Sonny Dykes references is they've backed off a little bit on that, just sort of give the guys an opportunity to breathe, take it all in, and how have they responded to that? I think so. I think so. I mean, what we're doing, you know, we're throwing a lot at them. You know, I think that's by design. You know, we didn't add a whole lot of stuff on Monday, and I thought we looked really – clean on Monday and added a little bit more today you know but we're trying to we're, we're trying to throw kind of the whole kitchen sink at them and see what guys are comfortable doing and how it fits our skill and you know and then we'll kind of pare it down to what we're good at and what our quarterbacks are comfortable running and what we think is going to utilize our players the best um, you know we still haven't had a, a full complement of guys I mean you just look around and you know, we got a lot of guys kind of coming off of injury that aren't playing much um, that I think are going to be big contributors, you know, whether it's Jalen Robinson or Jack Besh or, uh, you know, DJ Allen or, you know, just a bunch of different guys that, you know, we're kind of watching their reps and, and what they're doing um, this spring. And, you know, you look up out there and you go, yeah, we have some depth at wide receiver. And then you think, well, there's three or four guys that I think are going to play a big role maybe that aren't participating. And so Cordell Russell – so, you know, you start looking at that group and you go, we got some depth and we have some some big guys and some fast guys and uh, some guys who can make plays. And, and then it's fine-tuning the offense to kind of <clears throat> utilize their skill sets. Um, but, you know, but I do I, I do think that they're, you know, the wide receiver group's solid and like what they're doing and, and like that we're starting to get some uh, semblance of continuity, uh, even though we don't have a bunch of guys out there. The big question we wanted to answer here today from Coach Sonny Dykes was an interesting answer, folks. Get ready for this because, you know, as a head coach, he has been an air raid head coach coming out of the Mike Leach system, obviously. This year, Kendall Browns, his new offensive coordinator, brings a little bit of a different style of offense. But is it still air raid? Yeah, I mean, it just kind of depends on how you define air raid. And I think we still are air raid. I mean, we're, yeah, I mean, 
you know, and, and people, if you say, what is air raid? I mean, air raid is more, of, in my opinion, a state of mind than it is, a, you know, certain plays. And I think that's, you know, we're still running base plays in the air raid. I mean, you saw, you know, 20 different versions of mesh today, which is probably, you know, one of the big air raid plays that goes in day one. You're going to see a lot of quick game from us, more, more quick game now than we've run in a long time, which is kind of one of the big ideas of the air raid. And so in some ways, I think we're probably more air raid now than we were last year. Um, but, you know, it's a different verbiage and kind of a different, you know, the air raid's kind of built on a base of a very small base of plays with tags and stuff. And this is a different style. It's, it's not, the base isn't as small. It's a, it's a bigger base uh, with less tags and just kind of more one-off type plays. But what I like about what we're doing is, you know, we're moving the pocket. We're, you know, a lot of high percentage throws, which I like. I love getting the ball started, whether it's, you know, high percentage throws or, or screens or, you know, play action passes or balls to tight ends or boots and waggles and all the stuff like that. You know, I like a lot of that, and I like the quick game that we're running. It's much more quick game than we have in the past. And so, you know, I'm, I've always been a big fan of easy throws. I've always been a big fan. That's kind of, again, a base idea of the air raid. Get the play started, throw a completion, you know, a high percentage of completions, allow, you know, ball carriers to get the ball in space. And so I think in some ways this doesn't necessarily come from an air raid background, and it's not air raid terminology, but it's – Air raid. All right, there he is, the head coach, Sonny Dykes, joining us in the interview room. He had a couple of legends looking on here today for practice number 10. Let's start with the former Frog quarterback, the great Petey Chabay. We asked him about the difference between practices in the mid-60s as opposed to what he saw here today. There's an incredible difference. I, uh, I've been absolutely amazed by the, not only the, the efficiency of the practices, what's incredible. People are moving all the time and they're never moving slow they're moving <laughs> full speed they they seem to have, they know exactly where to go whether it be linemen or running backs or or ends it's a very very uh, uh impressive performance when you just watch practice you know the other thing that you pointed out when we were visiting out there is the team speed the overall team speed that you walk away from that going wow right you really do you just you can't believe you got that many that many kids that are that fast and the thing that, that surprised me uh, they catch a pass and run another 30 yards yeah. it wasn't to catch a pass and and jog back right it was they run it to the end zone and then then run back yeah so it's a very impressive workout. You had a chance to see Josh Hoover and a little bit of Chandler Morris, mm -hmm. the two quarterbacks, walk away from anything there? Yes, both both handled themselves very, very well. Their passes were like bullets, yeah. both of them throwing the ball really well. Hoover's a little larger, but, but Chandler has uh, some quickness that uh, – you know, will be to his advantage. Overall, you know what you're looking at. Uh, your final thought on it is, you, were you impressed with what you saw? I was very impressed. I just think TC's going to have a great team, another great year. They have a great coaching staff. You know, to see the kids are, the kids that are out there, are, they're happy. You know, there's the music's playing, they're moving around, they're 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 joking with each other, and at the same time, they're going full blast. So it's a it was a good atmosphere. I I'd never been here on a full practice before so i've uh, got a chance to talk to coach dykes and uh, really appreciated the opportunity that's pd shabay former frog quarterback who was here along with a great running back the number one pick of the baltimore colts back in the day norm boulash was in attendance and we got his thoughts on what he saw out of this fast-paced practice here today Oh, it's uh, it was like last year the, when I f came to the workout, there was just people moving and music playing, and even the players were smiling. So I don't, you know, I would never smile, you know, but uh, <laughs> it's it's fun to watch uh, as a spectator now and uh, to see what the, the progress of the team. One of the things that we know about you is you're fast. There's a little bit of speed out on this field. Oh, gee whiz. I mean, it, everybody is yeah. seems like they got real – they're quick and they're big and they're strong. And um, it's just fun to come back 
to an atmosphere like this. Uh, I, uh, uh, it just, you know, it's, it's, an, it's nice as being an alumni. I, I could tell, too, this is from a guy who liked to receive the football. You pointed out that these quarterbacks were throwing spirals. You enjoyed watching that. Yeah, there, there were, you know, we had a quarterback named Earl Morrill, and uh, his passes would be wobbly, and we'd <laughs> we'd say pull. <laughs> we go shoot and ski. Yeah. Uh, but these guys uh, got spirals all the time, yeah. and 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 pretty hard. And I don't, it's just a, it's just fun to watch, uh, and they're all good athletes, yeah. you know. Uh, how about the efficiency of practice? Now, of course, you played for Don Shuley. You played for, for one of the greats. But the way Coach Dykes gets the maximum amount of work in the in the minimum amount of time, what do you think of that? Oh, yeah, they're on the move. Yeah. I mean, they go from – I mean, they're on a time clock, I'm assuming, because they want to go X amount of minutes here and there. And there, so they're on the move. And it's just uh, – it, it makes it for a better – Watch, uh, watching the game on uh, on the field. Yeah, and the tempo with which they play too. Now, I mean, things are so, there's no more huddle. You know, I mean, you're exactly. the, you're at the line and you're going, and so they practice that way, I guess. Yeah, they're on the move, and uh, yeah, the, and it's amazing how you watch that. And uh, even in in the pros today, they just go out and, and run the play. I yeah. mean, I, I'd have to you know, PD with my quarterback, and I I always wanted to hear what kind of play he's going to do. <laughs> And then ask him a question, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't talk in my huddle, you know. Exactly. One, one final thought. Uh, your overall thoughts of what you saw out there today. What do you think about this group? Well, you know, just their speed yeah. and uh, the quarterbacks, like you say, they all spiral foot, footballs. And yeah. uh, you'd like to see – and the overall speed. I mean, the quickness of all these big, fast people that are very physical. And that's – uh, it's it's fun to watch, and I'm looking forward to the season. A couple of Horn Frog greats, Petey Chabay, and then there, Norm Bulash joining us here today after practice number 10. All right, 11 happens on Friday. Then Coach is going to give them the Easter weekend off, but Friday's going to be a big one. A lot of live action. There'll be some great scrimmage work that uh, takes place with the ones going against the ones on Friday. We'll have it all covered right here for you with Frogs Today Daily. That happens on Friday. Until we see you then, have yourself a great week. Roxo Media House.